Welcome to a Thursday night. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff that came in from AliExpress. And I can actually do some stuff for my uh, Apple. I can actually work on the feather hat for it and stuff like that. So with nothing to do, do, let's go and look at stuff. So we have this little bag here. And I'm just going to toss these on the floor. Um, this is four and let me just find the board in question I believe uh, what did I do with it actually good lord uh, one sec I just knocked the multimeter it's these here so we have these things here, the Teensy 40 dev boards. Not these particular ones, but a variant of it. Is the other ones in here? Yeah, they are. So the idea behind these little chips here is on these boards, let me get one out. There's a spot on them for two chips. This is like childproof, adult proof. Oh man, ah, there we go. Come on, there we go. So on the back side here and here, these, one of these chips will go in one spot, one chip will go in the other spot. So this is like, it could be the, I have to look them up. These could be the um, extra RAM for the board or it could be extra storage for the board don't know yet because I have to open the packs up and find out based on the part numbers so that's one and I have is the other one in here yeah I think this is the other bag right here yeah here we go so here's the other one So we have the two sets. And it will go with this. So I'm actually just going to put all this together in one of these teensy bags. So I don't really forget where they are. And then what else do we have? Okay. Um, zip sockets, but not any zip sockets these are what's known as ultra wides or wide zip sockets so you're probably wondering why the heck do I have these I do have other zip sockets right well it goes together with this the retro chip tester so I picked one up and I will have to do a bunch of work to get it all going um, mainly assembly there's no parts in here all there is in here is the power board and the main board. Uh, like so. So if we look at our main board here, it's completely unpopulated. So I'm actually going to zoom back out a little bit and, and we'll have to focus. Here we go. So the idea, of course, is this goes here. There's our zip socket. Now, I'm hopefully this big arrow right here tells me this is the way the lever goes. Yeah. Okay. So we still have a lot of parts to populate on here. Um, this chip here is basically a and the one on the uh, Arduino Mega. It's the same one. So we have to put a whole pile of stuff on here. I've got display. I've got everything. I've basically I've probably got most of the parts here already. I might have to go back to uh, AliExpress for a couple of parts, but. 
Uh, otherwise, I should have everything in here. And then this guy here, this this board, sits on top of here. Okay. Uh, I can't remember which direction it has. Probably more likely like this. Okay. That's what this is for. So. We will put this carefully back in here. Now, if you're wondering what this really does, I have my other, my, my uh, EEPROM programmer, and it can test a bunch of chips, but this will test a bunch of more chips, basically all for like retro computers and stuff like that. So it can actually figure out firmware ROMs and other stuff like that and tell you yay or nay if it's any good or not. So that's what all this is about. And I just bought a few extra just in case I needed it for something else. This guy here, what's in here? Uh, feels fairly heavy. Okay. These are IDC connectors. These are, I believe, the floppy pin. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, the uh, 34 pin IDC connectors. That's what these guys are. Okay. And what's in this one? This. Okay, so these guys here are um, what you would say is a conversion job. Here, let me just get one out for you. So the idea here is you have that ribbon cable that can go off to some internal floppy drives. And then this converts it to this, to these little guys here. So it's an FDC 24 pin uh, connector. Now it's funny, the reverse guy here has the other style of connector if you have a bigger ribbon cable. Now I hopefully I got the right ones. Um, there are several variants of this one. so. Let's see what's in this one. Oh, yeah. Ribbon cable. Now, I have the crimping device. Uh, it's over there. So, just a sec. I'll go get it. So I want to fix the ribbon cables and couple of the Apple floppy drives. This is basically the ribbon cable. But it's a nice rainbow one. And then it goes together with this device. So this is an IDC ribbon cable crimper. Now I bought two rolls of this. So there's one roll in this pack. And what's in this one? Okay, these are uh, IDC 20 headers, Apple, for the Apple, okay, and then in this one here, whoops, the bag broke, very good quality zip locking, that's okay, so these are crimp on IDC connectors, 20s, they go with that ribbon cable, and in here, Use the wrong cable. Now that's great. I thought I had two rolls of the bigger one, the uh, 20. This is, looks like a 10. Whoops. And that. Do I have a bag loose? Uh, I do, but it's all the way over there, so I'll have to uh, wait. None in there? Yeah, okay. So we do have one foul up here. This is the wrong size. We need this size. Yep, it is 10. This is a 10 wire ribbon cable. So this is completely wrong. 
I'll just go back and find out where I got this one and get some more of it. It's pretty cheap. It's like a me two meters worth, I think, or a meter. Yeah, I think it's two meters worth of cable. I think that's what they said, or a meter. That's pretty long. I mean, I can make a couple of cable. I don't need a mile long, so. And that I think is at the moment everything for Ally. Oh, I do have the uh, this. I think I showed this off. Here you get the idea. See, there we go. And what we're trying to make on the end of the cables is this right here. That's what this is. It's for doing that part. Now these are just your plain Jane unbecoming gray cables. These are actually IDC 20 to DB19 converters. I just kind of wish this was not female. I think the idea behind this is that if you're using the Yellowstone board and you happen to have uh, newer floppy drives, this will allow you to convert from here. So in the Apple, you put this in, you see? like so and this converts and allows you or you don't put this on and you got the or you just put the classical drive connectors on here like the original Apple II uh, full height drives like the um, ones I've got all about four of them up so this is pretty heavy man but uh, if you're wondering what this piece is for it goes in here it's your um you slide it in here somehow I think if I remember correctly that's a good question where does it go where does it go on this side Well, I'll have to figure it out because obviously this is not correct. Why would they give me such a donkey one? Hmm. Well, it doesn't definitely doesn't fit that. So let's say I'm going to crimp one of these guys here. Let's find out here. Here, just a sec. Okay, so it's like this. Right, and the key is there. Okay. And then this goes into here. Kind of like this yeah okay I get it that's how it's supposed to work but I'm kind of surprised that this is not fixed in place on here oh there it is there we go ta da So we have all the parts in place for this, and I don't really need that. We have the tool. Um, this is the Apple stuff. I'm going to put it in the Apple bin later. Um, we have the Apple bin somewhere. I was playing with all this crap. Okay, let's go and get this out of the way. So, I have to put all this away. What? Just a sec, I'm just going to get a Ziploc from behind me. Uh. 
this is where my wireless mic would do nicely so a ziploc all these go in here this goes in here with it there we go this and this can go together that's screwy now do I have a, oh, a bin for those no those are boards ah. so yeah zip sockets there we go ah. okay this can go in the drawer like so so that is it now where is that little bag I had it somewhere around here I wanted to try that out um, um just a sec the retro chip scanner can go up there are the under here Nope. Nope. Where did I put them? I just saw them the other day. Uh, <coughs> did I put them in here somewhere? Um, it's a bag full of uh, PCBs. had them out and then I put them away so it wouldn't damage them now I can't find them of course isn't that the way everything works right just checking on here I shoved them into a little bunt bin hmm what did I do with them? Okay, that's strange. You know, I just had it out here the other day. put it in here no, those are boards cables uh, microcontrollers You know, this is a bag. I didn't check the other day for the carbon uh, CO2 mixer. So, oh, these are the active terminators. That's what this is. Okay. No, nope. how about this? There they are. Found them. And put this back up here. So, these. are the little feather hats so the idea is this bag first of all we need one of these and we need not this one we need this is for something else this one we need So let us uh, get one of these out. There we go. 
So these go into all my pins straight. Yeah, they look all straight. Uh, almost. Uh, there we go. Like so. So we need to solder one of those in. And of course we need uh, move this over. This can go in the trash. Uh. Yes, my very fast soldering pencil. Uh. Um, cameras, let's put you out of my misery for a moment. There we go. And I don't think I need the knife. Pokey device. So I do need some solder, and I don't remember if I had any up here. I think this is solder, but that's not the right solder. This is wire, I think. And this is, I think, solder. So we're going to find out just a sec. I can't remember if I actually had some solder out here. Yeah, I do. And is this solder or is this wire? It's also solder. Okay. So solder, solder, and we are going to solder this. And I need my goggles because I can't see hardly anything on the bench. And I need to turn the light a little bit, guys. Uh, I need a little light on the bench. Come on, there we go. So this needs to go in here. Okay. So now we just have to solder the rest of the pins on here. Oops, a little bent. There we go. Flip it around and do the other side. Okay, getting there. I think I'm going to run out of solder on this scrap. Yep. Let's get the next one. Okay, see if I did it correctly. Yep. Now what we have to do is we need a daughter board. I think no, those had things on it. Let me just check over here. What we need Maybe we'll just borrow one of these, I think. We have another one under there. They're all populated. I thought I made one without any population on it, but that's okay. No problem. So what we want here is, and I'm just going to take these off, one of these off. We just need this piece here, and then we need some pins here. So what we need is we need the short side. Well, that's a short side. We just put it in here, like so. We need the long side. And this happens to be a long side. Yep, fits. Like so. And then what we have to do on this is 
like so. So let's see, I think it's the outer ones. Yep, like so. Keeps everything nice and straight. <coughs> so weather's been real weird in Calgary. It's definitely not April showers, that's for sure. There we go. Now we just to do all the pins. So I have enough parts here, I think, to build 10 of these if I need to, but I don't think I need a couple built. problem with these lenses are a bit on the heavy side for me. Pulls my glasses down off my nose. Okay. Take that off for the moment. Here we go. So... There we go. So now we have a floppy interface. Now if I go back over to my shell, I think it's sitting up here. Yeah. Here we go. One floppy drive. Now one thing I haven't put on here yet is this 5 volt connector on here. So this is the grease weasel. Uh, let me just unplug this and unplug this. So this is a grease weasel seven, and what we're going to have to now apparently uh, this floppy drive or well, three and a halves they don't reuse 12 volts, even though I built one. Now I, I know I built this cable, but I actually bought another one. Um, I have it floating around here, so I have got one of these and. So, but the idea here is this goes into this, like so. Uh, there we go. And then this goes into here, like so. And then when we hook up the, the thing to here, the, um, the feather, we can actually talk to all these wires on this floppy drive. We're getting there. Now what I need here is um, that little piece for the power here. So what I think I've got here is um, I think they're under my table here. Yeah, here they are. So what we have here is these, or possibly these. So what we want to figure out here is which one this is good for. So I'm going to just take the floppy cable off. And what we want to find out on this board, I can just use a, a dud here. We're going to find out which one of these two is the right connector for this. Looks like the green. So, so what we can do on here, and I need a copper alligator clip here. 
is we put this on here like so what we're going to do is going to solder one leg on here and in fact I need more solder so where did I put all my solder oh they're way over here now oh I've forgotten that There we go. So, you know, like so. And we are going to solder one leg. There, like so. Let's check it out. Looks good. Looks straight. Um Yep, and then we'll do the other leg. Okay, so the idea here, this would provide power for your floppy drive, for this. Oh, two pieces of useless solder. Let's put it in the bin over here. So, these guys, we close the bags, and they can go back in the bin. Actually, I might want to keep one green one out if I build another one tomorrow. Let's uh, leave one out. So, in our top. That goes on the ground and slides under the old desk. Yes, every little place has a bin. Whoops, quarter on the other thing. So, I will probably, as I said, I'll probably build two of these. In fact, I'll just, not this one, I keep doing this one. I need to do this one. Now, this thing, I should mod one of the, the the CAD drawing for this thing to do the Apple one so I could talk to all the Apple but the Apple is a little more trickier because the old Apple drives actually use 12 volts so several of the pins are actually uh, I think plus 12 volt minus 12 volt type idea and the three and a half that I just put on is not so so I'm just going to get this started Now, if you're doing these things, do opposite corners of the pins. It's just like this. So now I can do the rest of the soldering in a moment or later. And I'm going to put this guy on here like so. We'll use a little alligator clip to hold it in place. This stupid little clips like this are worth their weight in gold when doing things like this any of these little soldering jobs just remember it's copper so don't solder to it not a good idea so I see that I have to put my finger there a little bit maybe There we go. So nice and straight, holes outward, blah, blah, blah. So I'll finish this later, but. And this guy goes back onto here. Um, this is the uh, little, what they call um, dot star wings. And this guy here is an RP2040 uh, feather. You know, and I just noticed on um, Mr. CircuitPython.org, oh, they've updated it again. I thought they just updated things. And I need to put the floppy around here somewhere. Out of the way. 
and this can go back in the bin like so yes all I can say if you keep a clean bench because man you can go nuts on this okay so this is this I have more of these headers I'm just gonna put them in here that's fine if you're wondering this is all full of um, I2C things for for those uh, LCD displays I will need that one later and what did I do with the bag the bag oh, here's the bag it fell down there we go and I'll need that later to build a cable that's annoying that I have the wrong one and all these guys here uh, what did I do with its bag oops I think I tossed it over here somewhere here it is um, there we go now this can go on here and I think the greasy weasel I can put this in a bin I think I'll just put it with the coppers for the moment oh yes in our container of of course free candy that comes with every piece of electronics yes if you're silly enough to eat it you'll dry out you'll desiccate okay so that's looking good I just have to pin this one on the other side too but I'm gonna do all the soldering on here first before I do the pins underneath now um, where was I? Eh, doink, doink I forgot about this for some reason now if I don't have focus in OBS my uh, switcher is not switching um, I th suspect when I reboot everything will work correctly again um, I just finished doing a uh, system update and I haven't rebooted since then um, what I was going to do is check up on um, the new circuit Python I'm gonna do a board in fact I'll do this little guy here anyway I want to see um, I think I need this connector. Nope. That one's no good. How about dish connector? Yep. So what we have here, and you can't actually see it. And this is the very, very annoying thing about this. I have to come back up here. So we're gonna hook this up. So there's the thing. It's all set up actually on this. So what we need to do on this is, I uh, got the right button, reset or boot select. I think it's reset. There we go. Uh, Okay, so we need our little RPI directory. There we go. And on this one, we need work, controllers, out of fruit, uh, feather, RP2040. So the last one I downloaded was two, 724, but there was actually a 725, and now apparently there's a 730. So I'm just going to find my... Okay, downloads, Feather RP2040, oh no, there's 720, someone was playing with beta then, so we'll download the UF2 for the 725, and we will put it in Feather RP2040, there you go, file shows up, copy, and we will go to this guy here, and we'll paste our one file, it uploads it. Ta-da! Should reboot. Yeah, it did. 
Now what we want to do is mount that circuit python drive this one and we go to here and so we updated all our modules now an interesting thing um, Joe has really fixed up the circuit the Python extension in Visual Studio Code. There's a, a piece that's now working correctly. So I did the circuit circ up from the command line, but let us go open the workspace uh, for this. I'm pretty sure there's a workspace file on here. Here. Let's open it up. So our new bundle is going to be 0413. Okay. So we have some yellow here, so it's probably because this file here. Yeah, so it's 117. What I'm going to do with this, and see how the last time I did this is 710. Just a sec. We're going to close the workspace for a sec. We're going to rebuild these files. I find it just easier to than even editing them. So I go over here, and I go like this, and I go to VS Code directories, and I delete them. Just like that. And then I go here and I open folder, folder, and go like this. And so now I'll build a new VS Code directory. It'll create a new settings thing. We have to choose a board. This now doesn't puke anymore, which is nice. So feather, and we need, uh, where's our right feather here? Dun, 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 FS3. There it is. RP2040 feather. It writes the settings out. And then over here, what we want to do is say save uh, workspace as, and I will call it feather RP2040. Save it. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to um, update my ESP IDF and framework. I think I think they finally rolled out version five, um, so I'm currently on the four point whatever branch. But I'm wondering also, it, it doesn't that mean that they updated the platform IOs version of the ESP framework to five also? I have to check on that. But in the meantime, so the board's working. Mm -hmm. Ta. Okay. Um, so and all the files are correct now if we look at VS Code settings there you can see version 17 instead of 15 725 blah 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 now I was mentioning this um, let's say you want to add something to here let's say I don't know one of the sensor boards or something like that if you now go to the console prompt and you say show available libraries on circuit Python like this now all the adder fruits in there and you can just search and let's say we just want to add in oh I don't know let's let's, let's do a sensor I need a sensor <coughs> so we have sensor boards here yeah that's a magnometer let's not do that one no not the trust one Come on, William. Pick one that you can actually do. I <laughs> pick the magnometer again. Um, the distance one. Okay. And do I have an extra cable in here? No, I don't. So we need a cable. Then I put some extras in here. Yes. One, two, three, four. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is, well, I'm not doing good with Ziplocs tonight. Uh, there we go. So we have our little, uh, distance thingy and uh, we put let's do it from the other side yeah, this one 
like so. Now I noticed one thing about plugging these things into here. Um, you might sometimes cause a reboot of the uh, controller board. So let us just get this in. There we go. So we need some code for this. Um, so I'm going to borrow, I think I have a backup copy in here. Let me just go check on that projects. No, um, here work. Uh, RF2040, where's the controllers? I think I backed up a copy of what I was working on before. Backup four, five, backup six, pink. Uh, this code, yeah, that's a really big code. Open with notepad. Nope, that isn't it. That isn't it. Uh, so I am going to need some code here. And do I have another USB-C hooked up? Um, no, I don't. Okay, so I need to close this. I need to get some code off another controller. Um, file, close workspace. And we will safely dismount this. And we will mount this one. Okay. Whoops. Uh, safely remove. It's the wrong one I want. I want this one. There we go. Okay, um, so if we go into here and we go into this circuit pi directory, what we're after is this code. Um, copy and I will put this into here and I will make a new directory um, uh, BU7 okay paste one file okay now we go like this and we unmount this one we don't need it anymore I think I better make sure before I do this Open with Notepad QQ again. Yep, that's the one we want. So we unmount this like so. We unplug like so. And we plug our other one back in again like so. And at the rate I'm going, I think I'm going to have to add another USB C cable to this bench. I need, I think, three of them. Okay. We need... Yeah, okay, that's fine. So I'm going to... Um, copy... Uh, from that one. So, um, where was it? Work. Controllers. Feather RP2040. Backup 7. Uh, rename first uh, code to oops there we go uh, copy and go to the circuit pi drive and paste one file here there we go and then over here open workspace circuit pi workspace there we go open it up and I want to open up the code to so we have a VL53. So VL53ACD right here. So we're going to import this into the other code.
There's nothing stopping this from running two sets. Okay, so there's that. But we need going to need the library. We need the other bit from this. So we need the VL this line here. So I'm just going to go down here and put it in. We need uh, this line here. That solves that problem. So now we've initialized our A2C bus. We got a handler for it. Now we need. Oh, okay. We're going to borrow this because they were using it. No, they were borrowing the whole thing. Is this VL53? Yeah, oh, okay. So we have this whole thing. We'll borrow this whole section of code. Like so. Okay, uh, then we need downstairs the print statement for this. Right here, while not, VL ready, VLC clear, print distance, print count. Um, so we have from here, here, interrupt, distance. And I think I need count also. And we go down here to this while here and like so. Now count is not there, so let's have a look back here. Um count, 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 count. Where's count coming from? Oh, right here, count equals one. There we go, solve count. Nope. Wrong file. Let's try this one. There we go. Oh yeah, so this was counting the loop how many times I went through it. I really didn't need that. Okay, that's fine. Um, in theory, it should be ready, so control S. Well, some, oh, library. <laughs> this library, so F1. Uh, show available VL five two one four CD. There we go. It's installed. That's all it takes now to install a new library for the board. That is all working. That wasn't working quite right before on uh, I think version fifteen and fourteen. Um, it was buggering out. It was complaining about things. But now it works correctly. So. If we go to our REPL now, and I'm just going to bring it up, right there, there. That's where my hand is. Now my hand's this close. That's funky. Even with your finger on top of the sensor, now I wonder is it cut okay so one thing you guys have to be aware of on some of these sensors here I'm just gonna switch over back when they ship ship here there is a piece of coating that co protects the sensor so I'm going to take this one off it's a piece of um, capsum tape in this case so we take it off so it was throwing the sensor for a loop. And I'll just put it in my trash can here. 
also this light dot star is extremely bright so I'm going to change the brightness uh, let's go zero one that's much better <laughs> okay so our distance sensor now Wow, it's still inaccurate distance of 1.9 at its shortest like seems to have a minimum of two centimeters I wonder why that shouldn't be that way um, zero timing budget uh, control C control D control C so so we have model ID, we have module type timing budget, enter measurement on this. Yeah, control D. So that's interesting. I mean, what if I turned it upside down? Yeah, I can't get it to zero measurement. I wonder if it's shining through. Uh, what can I have here that will block all light? We need something, uh, I don't know, like um, something solid. How about uh, this? Nope, that's not close enough. Um, we need something that will just block all the light on the thing. Do we have nothing that tiny? Nothing that tiny? Apparently not. I mean, I can't block the whole sensor. Um, nope. Nope, can't do it. Hmm. So there's two sensors in the thing. One on the top, one on the bottom. And they kind of go like this, like a triangle. But uh, that is really how easy it is now to get these sensors. Getting really the hang of uh, doing these ones. doesn't matter which sensor I pick. I can chain another one onto here. And I just have to add the code like this and it'll work. So I wonder if it's bouncing off the ceiling or something like that. So if you're doing robotics, this is kind of an ideal. You could put it in front of your robot type idea uh, or your little motor car and it'll actually prevent itself from running into a wall. You just have to write some code that says, you know, if the distance is less than so many centimeters, stop, right? Now the funky thing about this, I think it's not running at its top speed at the moment because I think this is if I put this on a breadboard and on this on a breadboard and I wire it not with um, uh, it's SPI port I think this guy here SCK Mosey instead I wire it with um, uh, SCL and SDA it'll just go way 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 faster so uh, or one of the two I can't remember which one I noticed this too on these uh, feathers that for some reason if you drive it through the ports up here versus the ports down here you get a different radically different speed out of this thing so but it's kind of cool to watch I just, it just amazes me that the uh, uh, you get such vibrant colors out of such tiny little LEDs I mean, they're just generating ran we're just generating random uh, color here. Right. I wonder if you can go zero to one. <laughs> What'll happen? No, not good. <laughs> zero to two. Yeah, interesting. When do we go zero to nine? What happens? 
Oh, it does work. Random rand range. Okay. Then you times it by 32. So, seven at worst. Let's say you pull seven out of there. So, you're going to do seven times 32 for the color. Um, BC. Uh, seven times 32. So, 224. Uh, eight times 32. 256. So every so often I'm actually generating a non-color because I'm going past 256. So if you say 8, well no, if you say 7, that's right, okay, so 0 is counted. So if you do 0 times 32, you're going to get 0, which means you're going to get black. If you get 7 times 32, but I don't see a real white in the panel here. It's like... Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. So random in dot 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 random color. Oh, I see. They're they're building the three things so um, here let me show you sorry I did not do this uh, so here they're doing the um, the three RGB colors red green blue and what they're doing is they're randoming so but still even if you put seven in here this is what they were using at worst case scenario seven if they pull seven that's seven times 32 is 224 so you're not actually getting the full 255 unless you count 0 through 7 which is 8 but no it's no you, you almost want an 8 in there not a 7 so that you go to the full range like in the max from 0 to 256 so if we take that Yeah, that changed it a little bit. I wonder if we could just print out... Um, I wonder if you could just do this and say print bracket random color bracket like so. Yeah, so... Let's put a sleep after that. Uh, uh, I have a time sleep in here. Yeah, we do. Okay, so we'll do a time dot dot sleep bracket point one. That's a little better. We can actually watch it. You know, the other way you could do this, I think, probably... Let me just go back up here. This guy here... I bet you, you could go and say, instead of return um, random... Uh, where's random... random dot rand range bracket uh, 0 comma 255 and now you multiply it by 32 like so so let's say control s wow that did change things Holy smoly, did I slow it down. If we take our sleep out here, um, control S, that's better. So in theory, I'm getting the full range of colors. 
Although even on these pixels, I don't even think you can get um, a full 250 thick. It almost feels like you're getting about 64 colors out of the thing. I'd have to check on the documentation for a uh, bright star. Um, sorry, what are they call dot stars. See what they can do. Uh, we better take that uh, print out there. <laughs> Wow, that changes the little bit way that it's playing. Yeah, messing within the loop itself like that, you almost want to make sure that the uh, your print statement, your debug statements are outside of it because it, it's like really affecting loop performance. Why is count only going to one now? Well, that's interesting. Well, we don't really need count anyway, so I'll put a in front of it. There we go. Well, what happens if you shine light into the thing? Do we confuse it? No, surprisingly not. Ta -da. I still haven't found my missing ga uh, CO2 sensor. I've been looking all over the place for it. I keep thinking I have it attached to another board somewhere. Like I, I've got s stuff on the go. So, so I've got stuff on the go. So, different boards. Oh, that's where my other one went to. Okay. So, I was messing with this GPS. I was looking for this one. And so we have, uh, this is NeoPixel, that's Dot Star. Yeah, yeah. Now we might be cooking with some fire here. This is actually an RP2040 breakout, uh, a motor control version. I think that's what this is. This. There's lots and lots of I2C on it. So, I don't have it on those. And I don't think I have it on here. So, these little projects I was messing with, I left them on. Well, there's the other mini GPS. Is that the same as the uh, uh, the ver ultra small one? I might have found my other missing GPS. Ah, uh, um. <coughs> no, no. So, same one. This is the one that's causing me some grief because I cannot seem in this apartment to hit the satellites with it. I have to go back and look at that again. And this guy here, I was messing with, um, oh, cycling through LEDs basically. Well, you can tell that the, even though this place is really dry, certain of the LEDs that have, cor the legs corrode like you wouldn't believe. So. And then I have this bin here. So we have here, uh, I was playing with the panel. 
This is a Itsy Bitsy RP20, no, Atmel. And then I was messing with the RGB panels here. These guys. I'm finding it, these are really complicated to work through. This is, was my training on 745. This is a lot easier to deal with. This guy right here. This is effectively a NeoPixel uh, panel. Nope, I don't have it in here. So. There's one more here. But that was just an LED LCD display. And some other stuff. Oops, I do have one more. Is there a no, that's the big LCD I was working on in the Duno. Okay. Yep. Still can't find the CO2 sensor. Still missing. And you can go up there. At the rate I'm going, these bins will climb all the way up to the ceiling. So. Well... I think this is about it for the evening. We have a big long weekend tomorrow, so I want to look at the Apple motherboard tomorrow. I have to take the other one apart to get the power supply out of the open one and check the board. See if I can get it running. So I will let you go. And I should push this up, so I'll just stop the recording, do the usual YouTube crap, I should not have to explain that.